edition of Jack Talk, we have a real dope show for you guys today. We're going to recap South by Southwest, talk about SFA students' presence there. We're also going to talk about some students' strong determination to get the word out about an issue affecting everybody. And then we'll give you Spring Break Part 2, where you guys can get away from school until we get out in May. This is Jack Talk. Welcome back. I'm here with my two co-hosts, Sade and Brianna. And if you didn't know, the SFA pool has opened back up. So uh, I went out there, I filmed a little bit from the opening ceremony. Let's let you take a look. Guys. <laughs> Looks like a blast, huh? Well, I'm actually here with uh, Sade and Brianna, and Sade is an intern for the Recreation Center. Yes. So, how are you involved with this whole event? Um, actually, well, I work there. I'm a manager there, and um, I guess since working there, I know a lot of different opportunities mm -hmm. they have, and they have an internship every semester. They have one for the fall, spring, and summer. And so I applied for the spring semester, and basically what they did, they just gave me something that was just like plan the pool event and that mm -hmm. was it so um, once I got my I guess my task to do I just took the ground running with that and I came up with the event that you just saw you planned it from the ground up yes okay because yes. I was actually there shooting it it was pretty uh, pretty intricate all the Mardi Gras details and beads and everything but that's that's cool yeah actually I kind of came up with the idea of the event for Mardi Gras because um, I think it was like it happened right after Mardi Gras, so I thought it would be cool. Like I know students went to Mardi Gras, so you know if you came back, you still wanted to enjoy the experience a little bit more. I decided to just go ahead and right that on, theme. right on. So in your thinking process of you know your themes and everything, did you really think about the SFA students, the community? Who exactly were you trying to like focus on? The SFA students, because well, I mean I work at the Rec, so like I get to enjoy the pool all the time, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of students enjoy it as well. So like that's mainly who I want to attract because while we're still in school, those are the main people who come. Right. So I was more catering to the SFA students. So for people that didn't like like swimming or whatever, that just want to be in the atmosphere, what other things did you guys have available for them? Um, well, the Lazy River, if you don't really like swimming, the Lazy River kind of just like is a river, so it flows. You can just ride on floaties with that. And um, also we have like the, pa the spa. So it's like a jacuzzi kind of, so you can just chill in the jacuzzi. Um, and just basically, like, if you don't want to swim, not all of the pool is, like, deep. So you can just go there, have a good time. You can tan if you want to. There's a lot of other things out there. Um, 
Ooh, tanning. How deep does the pool get? I know we got a lot of divers here in Nacogdoches <laughs> that I mean, want to like, perfect their form. Yeah, like where you want to, where that boy was diving is, I'm not sure how deep it is, but it's deep enough to dive. Yeah. Um, and also, like, the rest of the pool is, like, I think four foot at the most. So um, if you actually want to dive and swim, you can do that. Or if you want to just, like, you know, look cool, I guess, in the pool walking around. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. The guy did, like, a forward flip. Right. Like, seven feet across the air. That um, was cool. How are the lifeguards there? Because I was kind of worried about his health. <laughs> what if he had died? <laughs> the lifeguards are cool. They're all certified. They all are students as well. Um, so, like, before you could ever be a lifeguard at the rec, like, they have a strict qualifications they have to meet. They have to mm -hmm. do, like, in-services where they learn new techniques all the time. So, I mean, you're definitely safe. And, um, you know, I've worked at the pool during the summer, and um, anybody who works at the pool is able to save somebody. So, you're always in good hands. Okay. Always. And also, I have like a shoulder rotation problem when I swim, so I usually need the little water wings. Yeah. You guys have, <laughs> you guys have we have water all wings of that. Us? Like we have floaties, we have toys. Um, like I said, the pool is open during the summer, so there's like a lot of little kids who like to come out. So um, there's all kind of different things. You know, since we have the volleyball net, we have volleyballs. During the summer, they put up a basketball pole or a post, and so cool. we have all of that available. Cool. What other like during during the actual planning of this? What or organizations did you call up and say, hey, we're having an event, would you like to be a part of? Um, really, I didn't have to call too many people. Like, the rec is affiliated with a lot of people. Okay. And the community really likes the rec. So, basically, all I really had to do was just come up with the event. Um, actually, I did have to contact um, Neptune Radio because I actually created a commercial. So it played on Neptune Radio. So you um, incorporate your skills here at Jack I did, Talk yes. to make an actual I did. commercial. I did. Actually, I incorporated everything I learned in this department. So you know, just different things. I made flyers. Um, so everything that I really needed was available to me at the rec or on campus. I just had to utilize it all. Did cool. you bake the cupcakes though? <laughs> I did not. I did not bake the cupcakes. Um, I left that for somebody else to do. I guess they could have had that task. Right on. Right yeah. on. What times are the pool open? Yeah. The pool right now the pool's open Monday through Friday, two to seven. So um, if you want to come enjoy that, that's good. Um, the hours will be extended more as the end of the semester approaches. Mm -hmm. But for right now, it's open two to seven. So if anybody to wants seven. to come out, are you planning any other future events for people to go come out to the SFA students to come out to? Not presently. I'm okay. planning my graduation. <laughs> but um, I know they really like the Mardi Gras idea, so I think it's something that they're going to incorporate each year. Um, the Get Your Splash On event. Okay. Well, that's what it was called. They have that every year, but it's like a different theme. But I know they're interested in taking the Mardi Gras concept and doing it like every year for like Welcome Back Week or whatever the rec wants to do throughout the year. Okay. Is there like a students only time in the pool where, because aren't we open to Nagadoches residents? I know I We're see. We're open like um, alumni, people who are part of the Alumni Association or okay. are actually alumni can get a membership to the rec. Mm -hmm. So that way they can use the pool. But during like the school semester, we really don't get um, alumni or like I guess the community that comes out. So there's no problem with old people in the pool. No, not because really. you know Nacogdoches doesn't have a right. pool, so that's why I was really considering to well, ask yeah, you that they, question. Yeah, they they have availability okay. to get to the pool, but during the semester, it's usually just students that come. Okay, cool. That's cool. I was really worried about that. Cause I, <laughs> I love yeah. the old people. What was though, the diversity out there watching. that you seen? Um, I mean, everybody speaking. like you. Um, Typically, well, that day was just students, but um, during the summer, you see everything. I worked here last summer. You'll see the alumni, you'll see students, you'll see little kids. Little kids love the pool. Like, I know I had um, a couple of little boys who got to know me because they used to come every day, and I worked every day. From your experience, what did your boss think about you planning the whole event and it being successful the way it was? Um, I heard that the, everybody enjoyed it, so I was happy with the event. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's awesome, especially coming after spring break. I know I'm going to dive in and the lifeguards are going to protect me. Uh, <laughs> coming up after this, we're going to talk about the End It Movement. We actually got a special guest, Jacob Griffin. I see you back there, my man. But uh, this is Jack Talk. Stay tuned. talking with a group of SFA students that took a 27-hour stand straight um, out of that end it movement that we did talk about previous to a couple episodes ago and they started on March the 6th and it was from 6 p.m. 
until March 7th at 9 p.m. So we want to go ahead and welcome Jacob Griffin here, the SFA student that was a part of the activism of the organization. How are you doing today, Jacob? I'm doing great. Okay, well, it's great. Doing great. I have Will here as well and Lonnie, and we'll be talking about the 24-hour stand that a lot of SFA students took part in. Um, exactly tell us exactly what, why did you guys continue with the Indian movement and do the stand? Well, the 27-hour stand was in uh, representation of the 27 million slaves uh, that are still in our world today. Uh, so we just took a vow to do a continuous stand, like each of us, uh, for the 27 hours. Okay. And I saw that you guys, I actually came out and, you know, wanted to see what was going on. Our actual analyst, Miss Laura, was there, and she actually stood with you guys, which yes, is amazing. Um, how did this experience open your mind? Because you didn't, you didn't think it was going to actually like work out, right? Or, or what? You didn't think people were going to be involved? Or how did this, how did this feel on your part? Um, it was, it was definitely a, a challenging experience. I mean, standing for eight hours is hard, but when you have to keep that going for 27 hours, it was really, really tough and just. Uh, made more aware and more real the uh, slavery issue that uh, the 27 million uh, go through every day. Yeah. What did you uh, guys do to get through the 27 hours uh, just for fun and all we that? We took a few laps every now and then, <laughs> uh, lots of coffee, um, <laughs> a lot of junk food, uh, just whatever it took. Yeah, I saw, when I went out there, I saw like a whole just table full of food. Yeah. I was kind of jealous, it. but yeah, it sounds <laughs> sounds crazy. The footage is amazing. It looks like you guys had a little band out there playing, trying to stay up. Yeah, we just did all kinds of stuff uh, just to keep us going, keep us pumped up. So you guys, like, when I went out there, you took a picture of me, and there were actually three different postings. Can you go ahead and describe what those postings said and what they meant? Uh, the posting said uh, slavery still exists. Uh, another one said. I stand for freedom, and the last one said, will you? Um, and that's just the way that we wanted to get SFA students or anyone involved saying that I signed the petition, I gave money, and I stand for freedom, like I'm going to take a stand, and then asking their, stu their fellow classmates, will you? So you guys actually signed a petition, right? Yeah, so we did. So did, did those actual, like, you know, my signature, did it go somewhere? Or? Yeah, your, everyone's signature that signed uh, got sent to the IJM headquarters, and then they're taking all of those to the president. Oh, wow. wow. How many, do you know how many we got? We got 846. Wow. That's pretty good. Well, did m many students even know that slavery still existed today? I would, I would say maybe 75% didn't know, wow. had any idea. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know. Last time you were on the show, you were telling me about this, and I... I had no idea. Right. You said yeah. Houston was a huge, was huge. Yeah. Um, import or something. Yeah, uh, Houston is just a big intake and export. I mean, being right there at the at the coast of uh, just uh, human trafficking, uh, just people being bought and sold. I'm more focused and aware now that you appeared at the show the first time, and as an analyst, I see exactly what you're talking about. So. You guys, what do you think we should be able to do as, you know, news anchors and people that are activists to kind of help out? I mean, our main goal is just raising your voice and just, uh, if people know, things change. Well, and I saw that uh, when I was there, a lot of news stations came out and interviewed you all. What was that like? Um, I guess a little, it got a little monotonous. Like, yeah. I mean, I think I did four TV interviews during wow. that. Uh, during the stand, but I mean, it was all worth it. I mean, our goal was to raise awareness, and yeah. being broadcasted like that is so doing just that. So Jack Top was yeah. the first one to break that story, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and everybody it was. else followed after right. that. Right. So that was amazing. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> exactly. Um, how many people do you think actually felt the actual movement that, that were helping you guys that night, that actually felt the presence of people, you know, speaking with people? You guys were very open when I came and spoke with you and basically just told the story. So how do you think that affect people? I mean, an issue like this, I mean, just the first cause for a movement like this is just being aware and like knowing about it. Um, and it's just not one thing that you forget. 
Um, and so that's the important thing. 27 hours standing up. Yeah, right. I, I couldn't do it. I can't, I'm still trying to imagine this, you know, and speaking from, you know, speaking with Laura, she said, you know, I was ready, I was amped to do mm -hmm. it. And I was like, wow, you know, we really just didn't think that everyone was really going to take a prominent stand in it. Right. So um, with that being said, do you think that SFA's organization, you know, an organization will be started on the campus and continue like long history? Yeah, we've got that started already. Okay. Uh, it's just the end it movement, and uh, we just you have, guys are registered with SFA. Yeah, we're official, and it's on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. Um, and we have different events uh, mm -hmm. similar to the stand, like just to where we can raise our voice and get students involved. And Bizarre. social media has been a you know a big aspect to you guys getting that voice out, right? Right. Yeah. What uh, other events do you have planned? Uh, for our this? next event uh, is going to be on April 9th, and that's our the End It Movement's national uh, Shine a Light on Slavery Day. And uh, we just have a, a bunch of small things throughout that day uh, that we're going to do on campus. Do you uh, guys have an Instagram, perhaps? You know, different pictures and stuff like that? No. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. I was thinking yeah, about that. Yeah. You know, There's I was an like, idea. Yeah. Light bulb. You know, I, I posted a picture on Instagram, mm -hmm. and everybody started liking it. I was like, I wonder if they have an Instagram. So was I wanted it, to bring that Was it like one of those pictures where they write on it with a fact right, or something? Right, right. Yeah. So uh, I posted that picture with the actual card that you guys had. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder if they do have an Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and, and drop that little dot <laughs> as well. Um, did other schools, do you know of any other schools that uh, did, the, did an event similar to this? Yeah. Um, across the nation, like hundreds of universities and colleges did their own Stand for Freedom. Uh, so it was just uh, a collective from the dates, March 5th through 15th, you just pick a time that's best for 27 hours. Oh, so but mm. all those signatures together are going to go in one file. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of signatures. That is a lot of signatures. Yeah. And SFA definitely made an impact. We have been making an impact. Yeah. And we appreciate you for actually coming out today yeah. and speaking with us for a, twice now. <laughs> um, and we've made an impact in the Indian movement, hopefully getting yeah. the awareness out. You guys, what do you think? Did we do a good job getting the awareness out about slavery? He Standing did. for 27 hours, getting yeah. people to do that. That's, that's amazing. amazing. <laughs> It is. So pretty good big. luck on, on your endeavors. Thank you for coming out yeah, with us Thank today. you very much. Have a great one. Thanks. Thanks. You guys, coming up next, we'll be talking about the highly favorite musical event called South by Southwest in Austin, where many of our SFA students came out and enjoyed the music and festivals. We'll be right back. I could... Hey, welcome back to Jack Talk. I'm Will Hackney. On this segment, we're going to discuss the popular music and film festival, South by Southwest, that is in Austin, Texas each year. Uh, this year, a large number of SFA students traveled to Austin, Texas, to enjoy the festivities. Um, I did. I know you did as well. I did. And, um, so, but we're going to talk a little bit about the history for a little bit. And I know right. you know quite a bit. Well, South by Southwest started in 1987 two years before I was born. <laughs> so basically South by Southwest was an actual event that was held for um, musical performances for people that were trying to get signed uh, with different labels, indie artists perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it has evolved into different types of music, not just one music. And I'm very interested in music, so did a lot of research on this. And a lot of people now, music executives like Clyde Davis came out and spoke. They have different social media things that they do now. Um, they have like, it's called South by Southwest Interactive. Mm -hmm. um, that's available for people to um, actually sign up for press. So take for instance, Jack Talk, if we wanted to go out there, we could go and sign up for like press events. And you get exclusives. Yeah, you get yeah. exclusives <laughs> with different artists and things of that nature. So it's really cool to go out there and kind of get your journalism schools kind of refined and actually talk to different people as well as, you know, talking to people from all over the world. It's not just from Texas. These are mm -hmm. different people from all over the world that come and they do band. They also have like a film festival as well. These films are cool. You have to actually go there. It's kind of different. It's kind of like a different vibe when you go there, but you guys experienced that. How yeah. was that? Um, I had a great time. 
I feel like, you, you know, you telling me the history, I didn't quite take advantage of it because um, a couple things I didn't know, but it was a great time. Like, um, no matter what time of day you went out there, there was always something to do, something to see, meet mm -hmm. new people, different cultures. So I think it was like a great experience. A yeah. lot of people that I talked to said it was affordable for them to do on spring break. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I don't know. Did you I go? spent a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> I, it I depends. My, my, my bar tab every night was at least like 75. Ugh. Uh, and I mean, you just, I don't know. I went, my friends have a house there, so I just stayed with them all, all week. I went Monday through this past Sunday. Right, a lot of people spend yeah. an extended amount of time because, you know, it starts on the Friday and it goes on and continues to the next mm -hmm. Friday. So a lot of people spend a lot of time out there. And yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I spent, actually, I went down on Thursday and then I left, I think, that Saturday or Sunday. And I didn't, I spent a lot of money, but only because I traveled to San Marcos and I went to the outlets. But actually <laughs> at <laughs> South by Southwest, I didn't, I don't think I spent too much money. Oh, I spent so were much. You a, were you guys <laughs> able to, like, actually go to those booths that they have, like, free things and get different free, like, freebies and stuff like uh, that? I went to the MTV Woodies, and I don't know if I can say this here, but I got free, uh... <laughs> Condoms and <laughs> okay. Doritos and Doritos. beer. I mean, everywhere was like an open bar, so wow. that was cool. Like a lot of the free stuff had open bars. Yeah. Were there much. like actual like police, like you know, in the streets, kind of like watching? Oh yeah. Take for yeah. instance, the police yeah. were having a good time. Oh, they were wow. watching everything. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't actually see anybody get arrested or anything, but I think they were just there to mediate, make sure nothing went out of yeah. hand. So. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys were just having fun and not really caring about music, or what's up? Yeah. Uh, well, I actually, I went for uh, two reasons. I, w I went to see my favorite band, Alt-J, okay. and then Fred Armisen, who uh, is on SNL and Portlandia. Yeah. And I actually got to meet him, which was a <gasps> wow. huge deal, because wow. he's like my idol. Did you take a picture? And, <laughs> Did you yeah, picture? I took a picture with him. Oh, and cool. uh, But yeah, I mean, he was like just the nicest guy and so funny and... So yeah, it was really it was a lot of artists. Erica Badu was there. Um, Prince even I performed. Yeah, Prince uh, did you guys, like a I heard that Prince uh, and Justin Timberlake performed at the same time. And people had to choose yes. which one they had Justin to go Timberlake. to. No, of course. Prince. 2020 no. experience oh just God. came out, and Prince. a legend, Prince. Like what do you think? Don't listen to this, man. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like if I could change you anything, right. I would have went to saw Prince. I, like, I didn't know he was there. Mm -hmm. If I had to choose between Justin Timberlake and Prince, I would have definitely chosen they Prince. They said mm -hmm. that Jay Z and Kick Kendrick Lamar actually recorded I actually a song. Had tickets to go see Kendrick Lamar, free tickets. Um, like, you know, the whole interactive thing. They have like a whole bunch of different places where you can. Um, RSVP because mm -hmm. like there's different houses like Spotify and um, yeah. other places. I went to the Spotify house. So you guys yeah, you told so me that you actually had to have an app to kind of like navigate through Austin, Texas during really. Taco um, like, It gets confusing because yeah. there's so much stuff. To, like I mean, there's thousands of events you could go to, yeah. and there's just no way to go to all of them. So you have to like s research and find what you want to go to. RSVP to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them are just for badge members, some of them are for wristband holders, and then some of them are just free and open to the public, but mm -hmm. which are kind of hard to find, but, um, and they always have huge lines, but, yeah. I mean, it's... When I went, I had to pay a lot of attention to social media and Twitter mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. and yeah. see what people were talking yeah. about, and then some companies or promoters, they would give you a coupon deal if you RSVP via Twitter or retweet it or mm -hmm. whatever like that, and you get in for free. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And then like just being in the Austin area, there's a lot to do. Like I know me and my best friend, we ended up finding a store called Dandies. Wow. And it's like tailored suits for men and it has like stuff from the 1800s. So like anything you could possibly think of, hats, tailored suits, like flasks, wallets. So I think that was cool. And just like seeing the different places, like I actually saw somebody who owned an apartment or a condo, like that was on 6th Street. Wow. So like they were like, they had their windows open, seeing everything like firsthand. Awesome. So. so, you know, yeah. what they say about the United States, it was like a melting pot in Austin, basically, yeah. for music, oh, yeah. films, and all that stuff. It really was. That was that's really cool. Do you mm -hmm. think that... Um, this experience, has it like opened your mind about just music changing, you know, going into a different genre? Or do you guys think it was more of a more live experience than just buying it off of iTunes? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I uh, think, I mean, I already have like a pretty broad mm -hmm. opinion or like views of music. So I'm open to pretty much anything. So I feel like if that's 
your perspective on music, then it's a good place for you to go. Because mm -hmm. anything that you could possibly, any genre, because they have like gospel artists, they have gospel rappers, they have like um, underground music, they have rap, they have pop, hip hop, anything you could possibly want to listen to. So yeah. I think if you're eclectic, you're going to love it. If yeah. you only like one type of music, you're gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. like it's for <laughs> anybody. I mean, yeah, there's really music for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. So it was nice. I saw, um, th I went to this one bar and there was this grunge band and Usher was watching them. Right, <laughs> right. And I, and like, I heard he performs like one song. And that Friday, I think that was the time where some incident happened with Lil Wayne and he just wanted the audience to like shout him out or whatever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were interacting, a lot of artists were interacting yeah. with each other. You guys got to experience that like firsthand. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, how many SFA students did y'all see? I saw quite a bit actually. A lot, sadly. Yeah. I was trying to, you know, like escape, so, but <laughs> it was cool. But you were proud cool. to be what? A uh, lumberjack? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I can't lie. Yeah, I saw a lot of people I knew. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of the days I just looked a hot mess because the sun yeah. and the it, Was it hot out there? Was it cool? It's allergies at night it was you. very nice, but during the day it was hot. Yeah. So. It got hot like later in the week, but yeah. So yeah. for future reference, for SFA students to experience during spring break, you guys, what do you think? I would say go as soon as possible because yeah. I can I can clearly see it going taking a different route so and start early during the day right yes. so that's all the time we have those are some quick tips thank you for tuning in to Jack Edition stay tuned until next time have a great day.